Wars on, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Ross. I like games. And we are back with the final day of the Vault Tour. Everyone on day three, day two, depending how you look at it, had to go 5-1 or 6-0 and in order to qualify. So we've got good players. We've got good decks. So settle down and enjoy a lovely round of lovely Key Forge action. Please do also remember that this is a video of a live stream which went out. So, it's a live stream. It was done as a live stream. It was streamed live. So, do please bear that in mind when watching. I'll be making reference to people in the chat and streaming and all of that. Just go with it. It's cool. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with round four of five. We are back in the semi-final of the Volt Tour in Eindhoven in the Netherlands. We have got Nacho, who we just saw last game. So we should be a little bit familiar with his deck. And we've got Renee on the left, who we did see on stream yesterday. So in theory, these are two decks that we've seen, two decks that we know. That, that should make my commentary a little bit easier, one would hope. We are in the last four. There are only four players still remaining. And yeah, this is... This is big. Now, I have had confirmation that it is best of three in the finals. This is not the final. This is the semi-final. This is a best of one competition. And in the other game, now we've not seen the other game yet, although it is here if this one finishes early. In the other game, we've actually got a double time traveler deck. And what's really cool, both the decks in this match have logos, guaranteeing that logos will be in the final. And both the decks in the other match have Mars in the final. Gar uh, sorry, Mars in. Guaranteeing that Mars will be in the final. There are only two houses not repped in the top four. They are Sanctum and Brobnar. Which, in my personal ranking of houses, they are numbers six and seven. If anyone's wondering at the personal ranking, number one, Mars. Number two, Logos. Number three, Dis. Number four, Shadows. No, sorry. Number four, Untamed. Number five, Shadows. Number six, Sanctum. Number seven, Brobnar. Mostly that's a thematic decision. But there is a little bit of playability in there as well. So, you know, they're the only houses not being repped. So any Brobnar or Sanctum fanboys, I apologize. Anyone who likes Mars or Logos, they are going to be repped in the final. Obviously, Shadows is in all four of the top decks. Why would it not be? And there is one untamed and two dis still remaining. So we are off, ladies and gentlemen. And Nacho is one of the only two players playing dis. And Renee is the only player still repping untamed in the top four. Good luck to these lovely gentlemen. I'm sure this one's going to be fun. And for anyone wondering, yes, bait and switch is in every top four deck. Of course it's in every top four deck. Why would it not be in every top four deck? And for anyone that's wondering... Ooh. Wait a second. There we go. I was going to say we switched to the other game quickly there. I was led to believe this was the stream game. So, we're off and rolling, ladies and gentlemen. Apparently. Cool. I think that means Renee goes first. Remember, the player going first can only play a single card on their first turn of the game. They are limited. That is all they get to do. After that, they've got to stop. So, I actually did a video all about the best turn one cards. Check it out, youtube.com slash plays. Where, incidentally, anyone watching this on Twitch, not YouTube. YouTube, you probably already found it, given that's where it is. If you ever want to know stuff about Keyforge, want some analysis, want some gameplay, want some news... Anything you need to know about Keyforge, I'm covering over there. So we get a Mother turn one. That's a good... Is that Mother? Or is that Dex? No, that is a Mother. So Mother comes down turn one. Mother is a great little card. Because it lets you draw one extra card during your draw step stage. So it basically just gives you that card advantage every turn. Now we see Logos from Nacho here. Gets down a Dextra. Cannot capture an Ember. There isn't one there. And a Ganymede Archivist who would be able to go ahead and archive a card, but you only do that when you reap. So Rene is off now, and it looks like he's got one of his Nepenthe Seed down. And no, sorry, his only Nepenthe Seed. This is the deck we saw yesterday with three Dust Pixies in, which is a little bit crazy. 
No, that's not Nepempsi. And I'm lying to you, ladies and gentlemen. It looks like he's got a logos turn. It looks like that is Library of Babel that lets you draw a card. And then he gets down a Bat Drone and a couple of others, including a Dextra, which can't capture. There's nothing to capture. And it looks like Mother is actually fighting here, taking out Nacho's creature. Gutted. That's quite cool. So, a nice logo start for Renee there. We got Doc Bookden down that gets you a card when you reap. We've got a Bat Drone down that steals an ember when you fight. And straight away, Ganymede Archivist taking down Bat Drone. Bat Drone has Skirmish, so it doesn't take any damage when you instigate the fight. And it steals an ember when you fight. Which are definitely going to survive. That is not a great situation. So we are going full logos here, ladies and gentlemen. And we actually see a Dimension Door coming down. Oh, no. No, I think actually it's just being discarded. Oh, that's a little bit sad. Now, we might have had a Fogify there or a Scrambler Storm. It was a little bit quick. But we do see a fight there. Ganymede Archivist goes down. We draw a card, and we're still going logos. Dextra captures that single ember there. Doc Buckton does a bit of reaping, and obviously when you reap, you then get to draw a card, which is kind of handy. Mother does a bit of reaping to get you another ember here. And is there any chance Nacho doesn't go logos? Could we have a turn where one of these players does not choose logos? It's surely possible. One would imagine. Yay, Urchin! Urchin comes down to steal an ember. We've got a Shadow's turn. Silvertooth comes into play, comes into play ready, immediately takes down Mother. You can't blame them. Mother's giving him a card advantage every turn. That thing needs to go. Although there are two Dust Pixies in Renee's hand, but he is going to be getting a whole bunch of ember very, very soon. Soon as he picks Untamed for a turn. Is that it? Is that the turn? Reap with Urchin, take down Mother with Silvertooth. Is that enough? Is that all he wants to do? He's thinking. Nope. So we get old Bruno coming down here. Now, old Bruno would capture free ember, except there aren't free ember, so he captures one ember. The whole do as much as you can malarkey. Oh, this is going to be beautiful. Full moon comes down, so you get an ember every time you play a creature. So that's free for Dust Pixie rather than two. Free for that Dust Pixie rather than two. One for Big Twig. Oh no, he only got seven Ember then. And it seems like that's his turn. That's a lot of Ember to get in one turn, ladies and gentlemen. I think he'll probably be fairly happy with that. So now Nacho's going for... I mean, Nacho does play Effervescent Principle. Each player loses half of their Ember, rounding down. Wait, did he just play the Effervescent Principle? Is that what's in his discard? I think he might have done. Ha! I'm being psychic again. That's kind of cool. Um, and then we play Fog of Fire, that looks like. So your opponent cannot use creatures to fight next turn. So, not a huge Ember generating turn for Nacho. But it's another one of those turns where he's done alright. Where he's stopped Renee forging. Which is cool. He's got a little bit of Ember. And again, it's just logos, logos, logos. Four out of the six turns so far, maybe even five out of seven, have been logos. So if you're a logos fan, this is a game you want to watch. Well, to be fair, there is double time traveler in the other game, which is kind of cool. So what do we have in here? Renee's having a little bit of a think about it. Trying to decide what's the play, what's the play. That's, the, the big decision here is House. Does he go untamed and go reaping of all of his creatures? He's clearly got a bunch of Shadows cards in his hand. He's going Shadows. And he's dealing a little bit of damage right away with Nerve Blast. Steal an Ember and then do two damage to a creature. Then he looks like he's got a Restless Whispers, which deals two damage to a creature and then steals if it destroys them. Same real effect, but Restless Whispers, you've got to actually get the destroying down. Whereas Nerve Blast kind of does it automatically. Incidentally, free Nerve Blast in Renee's deck here. That's pretty good going. Looks like we're going to have a bad penny coming down on the field. Or is it... A, oh, there's both of them. There's a bad penny and a silver tooth. So he's got seven Ember at the moment. That's not too bad. Looks like there's a Bat Drone and a... Too much to protect? 
Yes. Too much to protect isn't going to do anything now, but it does get you an Ember bonus. And like I've said in a bunch of the, well, a few of the games on stream this weekend, it's not often a great idea to stash cards in your hand in Keyforge. Every player, both players in the game are always drawing until they've got six at the end of their turn. So you essentially always cycle through your deck. There's a lot to do. Just keeping one card in your hand can slow you down and give you a real big disadvantage against your opponent. So there comes Silvertooth into play, comes into play ready, so you, most of the time you just reap, unless it's a creature you really want to take down. Bad Penny comes into play, exhausted, and we do play the too much to protect, it gets you an Ember, obviously you'd rather get rid of all but six of your opponents, Ember, that's what too much to protect does, that's why too much to protect is so good, but you know what, it gets you an Ember bonus, and like I've said, cards clogging up your hand can lose you the game. So we do see a Dominator Bauble coming down on Nacho's side of the field. It's a dis artifact, lets you use a friendly creature. So every dis turn you can use a non-dis creature. What else has he got? Because Renee's put himself in a position here where he is forging a key next turn. And it's going to take something like a bait and switch to stop this. But he's going for dis. Now we see fear coming down here, makes your opponent pick up one of their creatures. Probably never going to choose Dust Pixie with that one. And then we see a couple of identical creatures coming down here. They are Dust Imp, and when destroyed, they gain you two Ember. All right. Not the worst turn ever, but he certainly didn't stop him forging. And he doesn't have much Ember on the field. So right now, Rene has just jumped ahead. Rene is very, very much in the driver's seat here. Very, very much in the driver's seat. We've got some good chat going on in the chat, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. So keep that going. Bait and switch is not that good, in my honest opinion. I think a lot of people would disagree with you, unfortunately. But bait and switch is... It is a game-changing card. It is an absolutely game-defining card. I... Personally, don't think it's a coincidence that all of the top four decks play bait and switch. That's not to say that all the good decks play bait and switch. There's plenty that don't. I've seen some good Mars decks this weekend that don't play bait and switch. But it's so powerful. It might not be to your playstyle, and that's fine. But I think it is objectively a great, great card. <laughs> oh, and then both of those imps come straight back down again, along with a mind barb. Gives you an Ember bonus, your opponent discards a card from their hand. The thing is, Renee's got enough to forge next turn. Renee has got enough Ember to actually forge. That's got to be stopped. Oh, here's a fun one. Gateway to this. Destroys every creature on the field, yours and your opponent's. You gain free chains. Now, that did actually give Renee an extra Ember. That's not ideal. Because now Renee's actually got seven Ember and Nacho needs to take two of them away. And he hasn't got any creatures to do so. There's an Overlord Grecking. That's pretty good. Now, he doesn't have any Charette in his deck. Charette would steal free. That would be good. But there's no Charette in his deck. That would be a great play right now, but he can't make it. Now, the good news is he's on a boatload of Ember. He's sitting there with eight Ember. But Renee's just forging his second key. And if Rene can stop Nacho forging this turn, he is going to be massively, massively ahead. See, it's one of my favourite things about Keyforge. This is a top four of a big tournament, and we're reading cards. Because Overlord Grecking's a rare. It only turns up in like 4% of decks. There's a very good chance you've played dozens and dozens of games and never played against a deck that has Overlord Grecking in. Or you have played, but I never got it into play. Or you played against it, but it was two months ago and you've forgotten. It's so much fun. So it looks like an uh, untamed turn here as well. And we get Snufflegator, we get Big Twig, we get Witch of the Eye. That's quite a quick little turn there. Just play those creatures down and go. Now, he's unable to stop Nacho forging, and he's not in a position to forge himself next turn. So there is... There's a bit of a comeback, maybe, from Nacho here. It doesn't matter how quickly you forge two keys. We saw in the previous game. Very good player, very good deck. Stopped his opponent forging like four turns in a row but then ran out of steam and couldn't stop forging. So, Renee here, he could be stopped forging four or five turns in a row, 
And if he is, then Nacho's going to take the victory. As long as he can get some ember himself. Now, annoyingly, he's got bait and switch in hand. But he's got two ember and his opponent's got one. It's like the worst time to draw a bait and switch. Um, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> that's not going to do you much good right now. Now, we do see, I believe, that's a twin bolt emission coming down. Which does two damage to each of two creatures. Yeah, don't be stacking them, thank you. Uh, and then we see Dextra coming down, which just captures an ember. Lots of Dextra coming down. Oh, then Phase Shift comes down to let you play a card from a different house. And then we see a Shadows card coming down, Lights Out, which returns two enemy creatures to your opponent's hand. He's got four embers. Not enough to be forging next turn. So, I mean, Renee's got a really good suite of Untamed here. Rene could go full moon and just start playing Dust Pixies. And it's a lot to ask, admittedly. But if he can play, have one of those turns where he just goes nuts with Untamed against a whole bunch of Ember, he could potentially be forging his last key next turn. Now, did Nacho get rid of his bait and switch? I didn't actually see. If he did get rid of his bait and switch, that basically tells Rene that he's got a chance. Having said that, he will also have noticed that Nacho has an effervescent principle, which is also incredibly good at stopping you forging. It just loses you half your ember. So that is something to bear in mind. There's a lot of Shadows cards in Rene's hand right now. Maybe he can do something. Oh, he's going for it. Library access. Draws a card with Library of Babel. And then every time he plays a card now, he's drawing a card. Oh, so Nacho making him pick up Logo's creatures. He's actually using it against him. There goes Bat Drone. Draw a card. And there goes Dextra. Draw a card. And there goes Dextra. Draw a card. Oh. We've seen better library access turns. We have seen better library access turns. So that was pretty good. Do a bunch of cards, got some things on, captured a couple of Ember. It's not what he was hoping for. We've certainly seen a lot, lot better than that. And now he's not really in a position to forge. Definitely not next turn. He's still in the lead. He's still got two keys to one, but it's, it's not the turn it could have been. There's an argument going on in the chat about what cards are good. Um, and that's we, we've got Chainbound data. And we got data from Chainbound tournament, which helps us. But this is the first big tournament we've had. Now, there is a Vault Tour going on in Seattle this weekend as well. So after this, we'll have had, I don't know, 1,500 Chainbound events. That's a rough guess. I don't actually know. Plus two Vault Tours. At that stage, we're going to be able to see. But the fact that Shadows is in all four of the top decks here, I think that says quite a lot. So Overlord Grecking takes out a Bat Drone. Remember, when Overlord Grecking takes out a creature, it comes into play under your control. He's also got a Lash of Broken Dreams down, which I, don't, I think that's just come down, unfortunately. So he's not going to be able to do it yet. But it means, in the, and he doesn't need to do it yet, to be honest. But it increases the cost of your opponent forging by three. So all of a sudden, it's not... Six Ember to Forge. It's nine Ember to Forge. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. On the upside, we're getting pretty good numbers on the stream today. We're, um... You're over 60. That's more than I was expecting, if I'm honest with you, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you all for checking it out. I know you're not all here for me. I know a lot of you are here because it, it's Key Forge, and this is the way you can get the Vault Talk commentated. But I still very much appreciate that you're here. It makes me happy. And do make sure you click follow, because if... if Keyforge is going to be popular. Maybe I bring a bit more of Keyforge stuff on this channel in the future. Maybe it happens. So, we got a Shadow's turn for Renee there. And, oh, he's getting rid of something. I believe that's an Imperial Traitor, which lets you look at your opponent's hand and purge a Sanctum creature from it. Now, look, we're not actually going to be purging a Sanctum creature, are we? There is no Sanctum creature. That would be silly. Firstly, it gets you an Ember bonus. Secondly, it's information. 
it might as well just read, look at your opponent's hand. Now, Urchin comes down, you steal an ember. We seem to have reached a little bit of an impasse in the game. Oh, and then we see a little bit of cheeky damage being done there with Nerve Blast. I did say Rene does have three of these in his deck. Steal an ember and then deal two damage to a creature. You only get to do the damage if you steal, incidentally. It's the opposite of Relentless Whispers, which does two damage and steals if you destroy. And then a bad penny comes down, and then we just draw a couple of cards. Very nice. Oh, we got an untamed turn coming. There's Witch of the Eye, Way of the Bear. There's a Dust Pixie in his hand. There's a lot of good stuff going on there. But he's still not forging a key next turn. And Nacho needs to take advantage of this. We've had a few turns now where Rene hasn't been able to forge. And that's great and all. But your opponent not forging doesn't win you the game. Your opponent forging loses you the game. You forging wins you the game. Nacho needs to get some Ember out. Now, he does play Shadow South, which is lovely, but that's not going to get him any Ember. And then Magdala Rat comes down, steals two Ember. Now, when Magdala Rat leaves play, your opponent steals two Ember. So you kind of need to get this um, sooner rather than later. Now, oh, we see a Nerve Blast here. And there's only one, unfortunately, in Nacho's deck, but still. Steal an Ember, do some damage. This is looking better. He's completely run Renee out of Ember. But once again, he's not... There's no key being forged next turn, and now Renee's going to have a turn where he can try and get the Ember. But it looks like, I mean, it looks like he's got to go untamed here. Looks like five, if, if I might, my count was quick, but it looks like he's maybe got five of his seven cards in hand being untamed. No, 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 no. I said Nerve Blast doesn't do damage if it doesn't steal. He did, I thought he stole. I could be wrong, maybe he didn't steal. No, he did. He stole and then did the two damage to the creature second from the right. So, yes, he did steal and he did do the damage. So, uh, maybe Nacho didn't get it. Either way. So, Rene here, I mean, yeah. I mean, he's got full moon. He's got three creatures and a way of the bear, which gives it. Yeah, this is going to be a big turn for Ember. So, full moon gets an Ember every time you play a creature. So... Dust Pixie's going to get him free here. If he plays it. There we go. So free for Dust Pixie. And then I believe he's got another... No. He's got a Witch of the Eye at least. So Witch of the Eye goes down. You can put creatures down on any flank, but it must be on a flank. So there's an ember for that. Then Big Twig goes down. You get an ember for that. And then he's got Way of the Bear he can attach. That'll give him an Ember. Now, Way of the Bear, very fun little card. It's gives, it gives you an Ember bonus and it gives a creature Assault 2. You deal 2 damage before attacking. <laughs> uh, putting it on Dust Pixie. I quite like that. Doesn't really need it on any of his creatures. And now it's going to end up in the discard pile and get back out again quite quickly. There's no creatures he's got out that are really heavy hitters. They're not these big powerhouse attackers. Yes, Big Twig is a big boy. Big Twig's got a base 7 power. But he can only fight stunned creatures. Now, when you reap, you stun and exhaust a creature. But let's just say Big Twig is one of these. It takes a couple turns to get Big Twig going. Big Twig isn't just a drop it and play it kind of creature takes five minutes to get rolling oh he's got bait and switch he's also finally got enough ember to forge his final key so nacho he needs to do something here needs oh there we go and like i said there's so many cards he's got one dextra capture one ember we're good down comes Time Traveler, you get an Ember bonus and draw two cards. I'm very, very interested to see whether Rachel with her double Time Traveler deck can make it through to the final. Because that is one of the decks we've got in the other semi-final, double Time Traveler deck. That's pretty redonk. So now we've got six Ember for Nacho. Real back and forth game this. Rene went up to two keys quite quickly, Nacho got his key, and then we're just kind of having a flick around. Seeing what happens. Now, Rene wants to have a quick look at Nacho's discard pile here. Obviously, you've seen your opponent's deck at the beginning of the game. So, the theory is you should know what's in their deck. And then you look at their discard pile and you know what's in their discard pile. And then, in theory, from there, 
you can actually get rolling, know what your opponent's got, make sensible predictions as to what your opponent might have. That's pretty good. Um, only one non-shadow in the top 18. Uh, Fantasy Flight Games did go and publish a list of after day one and after day two of the house breakdown, and there was only one deck that didn't have shadows. So I believe that's Nepenthe Seed coming down here. It's got an Omni ability. You can destroy it during any house turn you like, and then you get a card from your discard pile back into your hand. That's pretty nice. Not got much else going on. I mean, to be fair, he's got a whole bunch of creatures with which he can reap. He does reap with wig big twig, which will stun and exhaust a creature. And then he can reap with Witch of the Eye and reap with Dust Picks. I tell you what, right, doing this commentary this weekend, this has made me much better at identifying Keyford cards from a distance. <laughs> it, I'm just looking at weird things. Like Big Twig, I'm just like, wait, there's a lot of kind of straight, thin lines that go all the way to the top of the card. That's got to be Big Twig. Dominate a bauble, it's a ball. It's quite nice. Magda the Rat's got that kind of glowing, knifey looking thing. That's how we know it's Magda the Rat. Weirdly, though, Bad Penny always looks like Bad Penny. Bad Penny, you can just always make out. I mean, you could look at it from two miles away and you'd be like, oh, it's Bad Penny. I don't know what it is about that. So, is there anything else coming down? Oh, he's got a regrowth in hand. He looks like he's considering using a regrowth. So, first of all, now he's got Dust Pixie. Is he attacking or is he reaping? Because attacking would deal two damage before he attacks. So, he's essentially dealing three damage. Could potentially use that to get rid of a Dextra, I believe. And that would give him, yeah, they've got free power. Now, that would get him his free Ember, but it would or get him his Ember back, but it would also put Dextra on top of his opponent's deck. So, it's a really whether you want to do it or not. It's, it's not a guaranteed home run play. It's, a, it's an option, but it's not a guaranteed home run. He's perusing, ladies and gentlemen. He's perusing. There's a lot of thinking going on by Renee here. Now, we are timed, so I think sooner or later he's got to make a play here. Because there's been an awful lot of time with nothing going on. You see Natcha getting a little bit restless there. Don't blame him, ladies and gentlemen. Don't blame him. But the other thing to remember, and I cannot stress this enough, this is single elimination. This is top four of a Volk Tour, the biggest tournament we've had so far. This is big. This is very big. These decisions matter. So he does take down a Dextra. He does get his Ember back. Now, that puts him up to six, but he'd like some more. Now, the good news is he's done it on an untamed turn. He's got a regrowth in his hand. Now, yes. So he's getting his, he's, he's playing regrowth, which is going to get him a uh, creature from his discard into his hand. You, I was going to say, got to think it's a Dust Pixie. Similarly, that Nepenthe Seed, I'm assuming, is going to be a Dust Pixie. Frankly, ladies and gentlemen, a deck with free Dust Pixie in is good. Who would have thought it? Who would have thought that a deck with free Dust Pixie in would be a good deck? I did not see it coming. I'm lying to you, ladies and gentlemen. I actually did. I did see it coming. <laughs> oh, look how much ember he's got. Look how much ember he's got. He's reaping of all his creatures. He's getting a double ember bonus. Three, six, nine, twelve or thirteen. That's a lot of ember anyway. And bearing in mind he's only got one key left to forge. And I've said this on a number of occasions this weekend. One of the things that you do is... One of the options you've got. When you've got two keys, one of the options you've got is just go, I'm going to ignore you, mate. Forge your second key. See if I care. I am going to go flat out to get as much ember as I can. I'm forging next turn. There we go. Magda the Rat, stunned and exhausted. That's pretty good. I mean, there's so much ember. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. It's 14. It's even more than I thought. Even a bait and switch won't save him now. 
Yes, I know he's going down to zero ember. But even if he plays a bait and switch, he's getting seven ember. Renee will still be able to forge. Oh! <laughs> oh, my goodness. Laugh so much, I choked. Yeah. Now, when I said it won't save him, <laughs> it's still pretty good going. Because, see, here's the other thing. Nacho's already got enough to forge next turn. So if Nacho can just play one or two more things, there's a skeleton key to capture an ember. And... There's an ember being stolen there. What do we have there? Is that a nerve blast? What's a nerve blast? Ah, oh, it was a routine job, I believe. Steal an ember. And now, things are very different. Renee has gone from 14 ember down to 5, and Nacho has forged a key and ended his turn with 9. So as much as that untamed turn from Renee was amazing, he didn't stop Nacho forging a key. And sometimes that can come back to bite you. Incidentally, we talked earlier, someone in the um, chat said they don't think bait and switch is that good a card. If Renee does not stop Nacho forging, bait and switch won the game. Simple as that. No ifs, buts, or maybes, ladies and gentlemen. Bait and switch won the game. I know there were a couple of other cards there, but no. Bait and switch wins this game. So now Renee's having a look. What's in his hand? What's in his discard pile? What's on the board? What can he do? He needs to take four ember away from Nacho here. Good news is he's got bait and switch in hand. But that would put each player to seven ember, which still wouldn't be enough. Bait and switch to get rid of two ember, but he then need to get some more rolling. He'd need more than just bait and switch here. Bait and switch won't do it. He needs something else. What's he got? He's having a think. And again, at this stage, I don't think we can blame him for having a think. This game's not going to last very much longer. There's a lot of Ember on the board. Maybe an effervescent printable drops to reset each player. But at this stage, we're a turn or two away from the end, no matter which way it goes. Incidentally, Rene does not have an effervescent printable. That would have to come from Nacho, which he's not going to do. He'd be forging. He could play bait and switch, which I'm fairly sure is in his hand. But bait and switch alone won't do it. Urchin steals, but that's already down. Bad Penny doesn't steal. There's nothing on board for Shadows, which is going to steal any Ember. So he's going to play in a Pent Seed, and he's going to get back... Oh, too much to protect. Here we go. So too much to protect gets all but six remaining. Now that's still not enough, ladies and gentlemen. He still needs one more thing. Can he steal one more Ember using Shadows? I'm willing to bet he probably can. Because too much that's not enough on its own, ladies and gentlemen. That's not enough on its own. The pent seed for too much to protect was good. Bait and switch would have put Nacho down to seven. Too much to protect puts him down to six. This is better. He's got fewer ember. But it's not enough. And there's nothing on board that can do it. He's locked into shadows now. So Bad Penny doesn't steal. Urchin steals when it goes into play. So Okay, so there we go. So it looks like we've got a Nerve Blast coming down. And Nerve Blast seems to make the difference. Nerve Blast seems to be the thing which is... It, it has made the difference here. It's taken away that Ember. And that's good. It's taken away the Ember. It's got Nacho down to five. And we are rolling. On Renee's rolling. And of course, look at Renee's board. Renee's got a huge amount of Ember on board. And he's still going. Looks like a Nexus coming down there. We've got a bad penny coming down. We're reaping with Urchin. Oh, and Nacho's just saying, I can't do it. That's it. Nacho played that amazing bait and switch. Seemed to be that that would be the end of the game. Renee's getting ready, thinking... Sorry, Nacho's thinking, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And then Renee's like, actually, mate, sorry. Good play. And it took a bit of thinking, but he had the too much to protect. He stole an ember. 
got a bunch more himself, and Nacho went, you know what, that's it. Well, that was fun. Hopefully you enjoyed it as well. I enjoy commentating this Keyforge stuff. All of the rounds from day two are going up. So any rounds from day one as well, check the description. There are some over there. And do make sure that you keep coming back because we're going all the way to the final. For now, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, where we talk Keyforge and other games. But by far the most important thing as always... Look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.